Hello and welcome to Mickey Art. Uh, my name is Michelle Edhouse and what magical mystery tours can we have today? So in the last video I was playing with this grater um, and I had the small hole bit on it and it created something interesting. I really didn't love it so I washed it off. So we're going to reuse that canvas. Um, but this time I'm going to do something, as I said in the last video, four colours was just too much, especially with those tiny little holes. So what I'm looking to do today is to um, just use black, white and brilliant red. And um, so it's kind of monochrome, but not monochrome because it's got an extra colour in there. And um, so what magic can we create on this canvas? Uh, it's asking for something different. So as you all know, when I do monochromes, I use my Fast Student Acrylic. I bought two little bottles of this stuff and then worked out that when you mix it with enough flow troll and water to make it fluid enough for fluid art, it doesn't set properly. And so then when you try and wash the silicon off, it becomes a bit of a mess. Well, not sometimes. So I use it when I'm doing monochrome. Um... I've also got this going the other way around this time. I, um, I've got the actual grating part underneath. And the purpose of that is it's actually a, um, concave. So the paint actually runs down the holes rather than being convex and it runs off so I'm just playing and I'm gonna add some red in because I really love the way the um, the herringbone one came out with the color added and that was a suggestion made by someone in the comments so please do share your suggestions share what you'd like to see me do um in my videos because i love having your input and i love hearing what you'd like to see so let me know and i'm kind of getting we might have enough paint <laughs> it's only an 8 by 10 canvas and as you can see it's pouring out the sides and it's quite thick if you are pouring paint and you are finding that it's still really thick when you set it aside to dry highly recommend putting a box over it um, check that there's nothing in the box, check that there's no dust that'll fall out, blah blah blah. <laughs> Talking from experience here. And um, see what can show up, see what... Um, letting it take longer to dry creates. I find that things that normally would crack and go all... I, I learned a new word the other day, somebody asked me in a question, cracky? Crack Krakut or Krakit or something. It's actually a um, intentional method that artists have used over the years to make it look cracked and worn and stuff. But it's not what we desire necessarily in our flow art. So if you want to avoid that, put a box over it. It takes a lot longer to dry that way. And... Um, you get to see what else shows up. That is cool. Let's get this stuff out of the way. My little. Now that is cool. 
Let me zoom you in and show you some of this coolness. Because I like it. Look at that. How cool is that? Oh my god, it's so pretty. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to zoom you quite far out so that I can tip it and you can still see what I'm doing. What I'm going to do is just take some white around the edges. Um, now the reason for this is so that when it starts to move, it's moving easily and doesn't distort. What I've found is when paint is moving, sometimes it has bits where it will just beautifully run and other parts stick and then you get a distortion of the picture. I'm wasting a lot of paint here. I know, I get it. Um, you get a distortion of the picture. Whereas if it's, and this is why we use the, um, when we do, ah, there's black on that. When we do negative space, um, you put the paint on first. Uh, yes, I should have put it on first. I know, I know, I know, I get it. And that allows whatever you're doing to just move with ease, joy and glory, rather than pain, suffering and gory. So, there we have the whole canvas covered, except the edges. Cover the edges too, and then it can run off the sides with these as well. Well, with more ease, anyway. Get rid of this big black smear from that dollop of white. Okay, can you see? So this is going to be a little bit like stretching out a circle pour. You pull it in one direction and then bring it back to the center. Try and circle everything back up again. Take it the other direction. Well, it just starts to tip over the edge. Bring it back to the middle. And why do you bring it back to the middle? So that when you've got large quantities of paint, it's not all going to go splurching. Like if I was to tip this this way now, all my paint's on this half of the canvas, so it's going to run that way faster than it will run that way. It's just purely dynamics of the paint and the... Okay, I have no silicon in any of this, by the way, guys. Um, that was silly. Bring it back. And out this way. Bring it back. Down that way. And down that way. As you can see by the huge puddle that comes off the edge, 
there's a lot of paint on here. <coughs> and wow. So what you can see popping in there is the air bubbles. Wow, that red is so dramatic. It's so cool. What I really love, and I'm not going to put through here, those drips just like, because they've dripped the same paint out through, they've, um, They look the same. They're so cool. And you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking, leave it alone, Michelle. Stop right there. Bum, bum, bum. Before you go any further, stop. <laughs> um... How does it get any better than that? Now, because there is so much air in this paint, I mixed it almost immediately before I poured, so it hasn't had any time to settle out. Um, there's gonna be air bubbles coming up regularly as it they so slowly work their way up through the large amounts of paint. So if you don't like this effect, this bubbled popping thing, that's cool. Just make sure you got no air in your paint before you start. Mm. Now, the question then becomes, do I use the torch to try and get that out or not? What do you guys reckon? Torch or not to torch? To torch or not to torch? That is the question. Whether it is never in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of bubbles that come up over the hours. Uh. What is that? Shakespearean quirt? Is it Henry the, Henry the Fifth? No? Hamlet? No? I don't know. My mother would tell you. My grandfather would tell you. Me. I just know it's Shakespeare. Really important when you've got paint this thick to let it dry slowly. So as I was saying before, I'm going to put this under a box. The heat's disappeared in New Zealand right now, which is totally fine for me with regards to painting. Um, as per normal, lots of people get to complain, but it's supposed to be summer. I'm going, how's it getting any better than this? My paint doesn't set quite so much. Or so fast, or look at that perfect circle there. That's cool. I like that. The question then becomes how willing am I to allow it to be not centered? <laughs> OCD is great. I love being OCD. I just got to know when to use it to my advantage and when it's actually okay to let it be. Let it go. Let it go. Let it dry the way it wants. So, I'm really happy with that. I know that was a pretty quick video. And I'm so super happy with this. Let me get you down and show you the details and then you can go, but let's go. Let's show details. Okay. 
So we've got the black and the white on their own there. And then we've got going into the red. And I like that red. That is so... Is it, I mean, it is Reeves' brilliant red. And it is so brilliant. Oh, goodness me. And so around the edges. So you can see there those drips. And as the drips have expanded out as the next drip drops down onto it from the um, the grater. I think we've made this grater great again. It's not just great, it's awesome! It's fantastic! It's so cool. Look at this. I love that. That is cool. So, so cool. So I dare you, what have you got in your kitchen that would like to come and play with your paint. And you know what? If you wash it quickly, it doesn't stain it. Just get on with it. I love this. I really, really do. It's super cool. And um, what else is possible? What else can my kitchen contribute? <laughs> How much fun can you have, guys? And what if art was about not only having fun, but energetically sharing that fun with all that see your painting. Are you willing to be that invitation to others to be and have and perceive the energy of fun? Perceive it, to know it, to receive it. I am, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. Have fun. Bye-bye.